So today I'm going to be covering how to make BL Heli 32 SCSCs work correctly with telemetry to a KISS FC. This KISS FC is going to be running version 1.3 RC30. And then I'm also going to cover how to connect a KISS OSD and I'm going to use a Piggy OSD on that. So essentially what you get here is you get full telemetry to the KISS flight controller and then you get it also on your OSD. And later on in the video I'll show you what the OSD looks like so you know what you're uh, actually going to get for an end product. So what you're going to need here to get started is you're going to need we'll start out with the ESCs. So you're going to need either a programmer here and this is just any programmer. I think they'll all work. I got a bunch of them but uh, this is the one I've been using lately so that one will work. And that will program your uh, BL Hello 32 ESCs. Uh, I think these are already programmed though to the newest version but we'll find out. And then you're also going to either need a, or you can use a Betaflight uh, controller to do pass through to uh, program these as well. And uh, from what I've heard you need to run Betaflight 3.2 in order to get that to work correctly with uh, the 32 with the 32-bit uh, BL Heli ESCs. So anyway, for this, I'm going to be using this programmer. And then also for the piggy here, you're going to need a uh, FTDI uh, programmer. This is kind of intimidating to me, at least when I first started. But with the way Kiss software is it set up, it's super easy. The program's already in the uh, firmware, so you don't really have to do anything. It's just point, click, upload the. Uh, firmware right to the OSD here. So first we'll cover programming the BL Heli 32 ESCs. So as far as programming these guys I'm just going to cover the basics because there's a bunch of videos on programming uh, BL Heli ESCs so I don't want to waste too much time on it. I'm more concerned about getting this to work with the KISS and getting, this, getting it to work with the uh, Piggy OSD. So first thing you want to do here when you program these is you want to have some way to get power to them because you need power when you do the programming. If they're not powered, they're not going to program. Okay, so we're going to program the uh, BL Heli 32 ESC right now. I'm going to open up my programmer here and we're going to read our setup. So that's done. And we're going to check for the newest firmware. Let's see, where's this at? Oh, here we go. And we'll flash that really quick. Okay, so this already has the newest version. So what we're going to do here for, to start out is I disable throttle calibration enable. I'll put my minimum to 1000, maximum to 1000, center to 1500. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, with the way I typically set it up, that'll cover it all. I like to turn up my beeper strength, just so I can hear it a little better. And then I'll write my setup here. And then I'll disconnect. And I'll read it again just to make sure my settings took. All of our settings took. And we're done. So you got to do that four times because you got four ESCs, obviously. And uh, after you do all that, your ESCs are done. Now, the next part, flashing wise, that I'm going to cover is flashing the Piggy OSD with the newest firmware that KISS has. I'll include links in the description so you guys can just go ahead and download it. Uh, I already have it on my system so we'll get started from here. So what you'll see here is you'll see you got pins here that'll say DTR and then I believe the last one is ground. And you match these up here on the piggy. So this is our DTR. We'll match up our DTR and our ground. And we'll just hold this here. You'll see it goes uh, red there so we know we're ready and we'll go to Windows 
And then the first thing you want to flash is this configuration tool. Uh, the reason why you do that is so you can actually set up the OSD how you want it. You can change parameters around and things like that uh, depending on what you want on the OSD. And then after you do that, after you set it up in the goggles with your configuration the way you want it, then you go back and reflash it again with the OSD file here. So we'll start out with the configuration tool. Oh, alright, we got a problem here. Yep. My bad. So actually we'll go here to Xloader and we'll load this and now this this program is already in the firmware when you download it from KISS which is nice. Now I never changed my device. We'll just pick the hex file we want. So we want to use the config tool hex, hex file and we'll hit upload here. And what you'll see, you'll see here this is flashing so now it's uh, uploading. Unfortunately there's not a bar so you kind of just got to sit here and wait till it's done. Alright, so we're done here. So it shows that we're finally uploaded. And at this point you can just disconnect it, take it off, and we'll use this later when we go back and flash our, uh, our regular OSD file after we do our configuration. Now there was one part that I wanted to go over with again uh, concerning this FTDI adapter. There's a whole bunch of different kinds out there. I just picked the one that looks uh, like this and it says uh, FTD1232 on the back. When I got it, it already had this uh, it already had this jumper here set to 5 volts. So you want to make sure that you have that on 5 volts because the uh, piggy needs 5 volt input. There's also a 3 volt input here so you don't want to make sure that it's on 5 volts. And then in this X loader program, once we get this to focus here, there's a couple different options here. The one that I used was just this one on the top. That one works just fine with the uh, FTDI adapter that I have. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to solder all this together. I'm going to add my motor here so we can uh, see everything working on the OSD later when I put that file up. Uh, so I'll get all this all soldered together and uh, basically it just solders together like any normal KISS build except we do have to add a telemetry wire here to the BL, BL Heli 32 ESC in order for it to get telemetry to the KISS. So I'll wire all this up, we'll come back and then uh, I'll show you how I wired it all up and then I'll run the OSD configuration file and you can see that in the goggles and uh, then I'll then we'll go back through and we'll flash the piggy again with the regular OSD and then we'll go back and we'll look at that in the goggles and you can see all that works. You can do all your PID tuning, all your VTX adjustments and I'll wire up a VTX to it as well so we can see that uh, and you can do everything. Everything basically that be, that either Betaflight can do or you might have seen the Mr. Steel PDB that Impulse is offering You'll get all that in any build that you want with KISS. Okay, there was one more thing that I wanted to cover prior to finishing up soldering the whole uh, bench test rig here to show you guys this all working. Uh, now, before, on the older versions of KISS, you used to take the Tramp telemetry wire or the uh, smart, smart Audio wire and you would wire it to one of these two pads. I don't recall which one it was, but it was these two pads here. I think it was the RX pad if I remember right, but I could be wrong. So now with version 1.3, I starting at uh, RC25, this is RC30 on here, you now wire this in order to have both working. You have to wire the Tramp telemetry or the uh, Smart Audio wire over here to this RX3 pad and then the piggy here goes to the RX and TX on the top here right next to the USB port and then on the piggy you'll see here you have an RX and TX. Uh, I'll cover in a little bit on the setup on KISS how to get both of these working together but uh, essentially with the wiring of this you go from the RX pad to the TX pad on the piggy and the, t the TX pad on the KISS 
to the RX pad on the Piggy. And then the rest of this is pretty straightforward. You have uh, these three pins here, which are for your camera. And then you have three pins here, which is your input. So you'll have your 5 volt, your ground, and your video input. And then over here, for out to the camera, you have 5 volt, ground, and video out to the camera. Okay, so I have all the wiring done. As you can tell, it's kind of a mess, but it's set up on the bench. Uh, once you get this in your quad, believe me, the wiring cleans up immensely. And... Uh, you don't see this entire mess unless you're a really crappy builder. But anyway, uh, so I have the motor hooked up here to the ESC that we're going to use. This is a uh, Speedix GS35 amp ESC. Now the important, another important thing when you're doing this, if you want the full telemetry with the current sensing, you need to make sure that it has a shunt resistor on the ESC that you pick. Uh, I know that these work because I already, I'm already using these in a build. And I know that there's a couple others. Uh, one of the big ones that I know works is the Wraith. I was actually going to go with those, but what I didn't like about them is the telemetry pad was somewhere in the middle of the ESC here. I like these because it's all the way at the end. And it's a 35 amp ESC, so it gave me a lot of headroom. Plus they were uh, priced pretty well. At, I think they were like $17 in the ESC. Uh, and then, I, then you also have to have a... Uh, a free sky receiver that can do telemetry as well. If you don't have that, uh, I, don't, I don't think it's going to work. It might work, but I'm not sure. I know you won't get telemetry back to your radio if you wanted to do that, but since you have it in your uh, OSD, I don't think that's an issue anymore. So let's move over here and we're going to move into setting up uh, the KISS software. Okay, so the first thing we'll do here is we'll connect to our flight controller. Uh, all this stuff is pretty standard fare. Anybody that's used KISS knows this first screen. And uh, if you have any issues with this, there's a whole ton of videos that'll help you on that end of it. But what we're going to concentrate here is we're going to concentrate on this advanced tab here. I'll move the camera just a touch. Uh, so first thing you want to have here for your device is you want to have OSD. That's going to be for our Piggy OSD. And then the second thing you want to have, depending on your VTX, uh, in this case I'm using a Tramp, so you want to have Tramp on this. Or if you're using a Unify, you can go to Unify. Or I think this will work with any other smart audio device, but don't quote me on that. I know for sure that it will work with a Tramp, and I know for sure that it will work with a Unify. Uh, and then initially you just set whatever channel you want here, we can change that later on in our OSD. But for now, I'm going to use Fat Shark 4. And then after we make any of those changes, we'll save. And from here, we'll disconnect. The next part of the video we're going to cover is I'm going to cover the configuration setup inside of the goggles. So let's move into setting up the configuration here in the OSD. So the first thing I like to do is update the font. Uh, I already did it on this one on accident. So what you end up getting is you get a better looking font in the goggles here. Okay, so our font's updated. And then in here you can change your display, set your RSSI up. I like to use large icons, or large font size. You set your goggle. Uh, you can set your call sign here. We'll just exit out. You can move items around. So this is basically what the OSD is going to look like. For the purpose of this, I'm just going to leave it stock. Uh, you can center your OSD, you can set your battery size, when your warning goes off, those kinds of things. You can set your VTX, max VTX power. Just set that at, uh, we'll set that at 600. We'll go back, and then from here we'll hit save. So once we save the settings, lost. then we're going to exit out of here and we're going to reflash the Piggy OSD. So we get the regular OSD on there. Now let's cover flashing the standard OSD back on here after we already did our setup. One thing that I failed to mention too was there's a ground pad here 
at the bottom of the piggy. Let me see if I can zoom in on it so you guys can see it. Anyway, there's that ground pad there. And the first time around, I couldn't get it to work uh, with both devices hooked up, the OSD and uh, the VTX. So I had to add this ground wire. I did have to add that in another build, but it, surprisingly I have a build that works just fine without the ground wire. So I would add the ground wire anyway, just save yourself some trouble. So anyway, we're going to flash this, so we'll disconnect the power from our VTX again, and we'll disconnect our camera as well. And then we'll bring in our FTDI, and we'll make sure that our pins are set up here right. And so there we go. We'll plug this in, and we'll start our flash. and we're done. So for this flash again I picked the regular OSD file here and then did the flash. Okay so let's cover how it looks when you're actually running the uh, the OSD in regular flight. Now, as you can see here I do have one motor hooked up and you can see up in the top left corner there you can see that spinning icon uh, telling you that the motor is actually running. And you can see our amps are out here. And you can hear the motor in the background, obviously. So once you land, then you'll have your stats screen here at the end. And it'll tell you all the information. You can scroll through these. And obviously these other three are blank. Because those would be your other uh, four ESCs. So that pretty much covers it. That's the entire uh, KISS OSD setup and uh, getting BL Heli 32 ESCs to uh, report telemetry back to KISS. Thanks for watching. Bye.